Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. We're still off by reading a scripture, and that scripture is from Galatians 5, 22 through 25. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with afflictions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. A couple of announcements. We have a Priesthood 101 class starting next week on the 24th. You can register at calendar.cjccf.org. Just look for that particular, that particular event. And those that register for the first class or for the second class, because the first one's an introduction. So if you miss that, it's not the end of the world. But we would like for you to be there. Those that register and turn in their homework assignments will receive a certificate at the end of this 10-week course. Alan Brodus will be teaching. He is our head evangelist. He'll be teaching the class. And he'll be, well, I, I don't know if grading is the right word. These are more just project updates, but he'll be advising you on the work that you're doing. The point of this class is both an introduction to Mormon Kabbalah and the priesthood, because they're really one and the same in the fellowship. In order to be involved in the priesthood, you have to be able to build that personal relationship with the Lord. And that's what this Priesthood 101 class is about. You're going to learn a little bit about how some of the roles in the fellowship function at first. But really, the bulk of this class is going to be about you building a personal relationship with God. The manual is free. It's a PDF online. We've been offering this class for quite some time now. I have taught it myself in the past numerous times. And we have had some people to graduate. Those that are coming this summer to be ordained will need to take this class in order to receive the ordination and their endowments. There will be, following this, just as information, it's not on the calendar yet, a Temple 101 class that's still kind of in a beta phase that Alan will also teach that'll help those that will be receiving their endowments, receiving these ritualistic ordinances. They'll be able to learn what they are, what to do with them. We'll, we will have very open discussions about them. So this class is open to all, not just those that are going to be ordained or endowed. If you've been ordained or endowed in the past, or if you're interested in being ordained or endowed in the future, this will be a good class to join. And again, those that register and those that turn in their homework will receive certificates at the end of the course once it's completed. I also want to remind you, if you don't have it on your calendar yet, the first Saturday of every month, which the first Saturday of February is coming up, we do have a temple committee meeting. So if you would like to participate, whether in the meeting or in the temple committee or both, we would ask that you please attend. Again, that is on our calendar, calendar.cjccf.org. Or you can just go to cjccf.org and click on the calendar in the menu. And lastly, every Thursday, we have a meeting. Right now, the, the main focus of the meeting is getting ready for conference in April. But that said, it is we do try to get some business out of the way and then just have an open discussion. So if you would like to converse with the Saints, Thursday is a good time to do it. If you want to ask me questions or just chat about the fellowship in general and learn more, you can always call me and schedule an appointment, but if you'd like to talk to more than one person about it, these Thursday meetings are the time to come and ask questions. All are welcome. You can register for either of those, but you don't have to. It is kind of nice when people register because then we have a general idea of how many people are coming. But again, the only thing you really we're really asking you to definitely register for are the classes. As far as prayer requests this week, I haven't really gotten a whole lot of prayer requests. We have people that are sick. We have people that are coming into the fellowship. We have people that we're seeking, and some are kind of, uh, what's the word we're looking for here? Struggling with some things. Not not with the fellowship itself, 
but with things in their lives. It seems like as soon as someone becomes interested in growing closer to the Lord, Satan immediately begins attacking them. So we do ask that you please pray for these brothers and sisters. Help them to overcome the adversary, to overcome the challenges that are in their lives. Pray for those that are seeking that they will be able to find what they are looking for, whether that be here in the fellowship or somewhere else. Please pray for the committee that puts these Sabbath services together. We're still getting our getting ourselves together, we'll say. And uh, it, it's not really challenging. We'd, we would like to have some more people on the committee. But we could always use your prayers. As far as the sick and afflicted, please make sure to pray for those that are sick, but also those that have recovered. We are very thankful when the Lord blesses us. And the people that were asking for prayer requests about getting a job, it appears that most of them have gotten a job. There is one that is still looking, so if you could please pray for her. And please pray that this whatever job these the sister gets will be a not only a financially good fit, but also a spiritual and emotional and, and life balance life work balance appropriate job position. So with that, let's go ahead and take a moment, pause the video, and sing a hymn if you'd like, offer an opening prayer, and we'll be here when you get back. Welcome back. We are now going to, together the fellowship, recite, say the prayer of the Shema, which is Deuteronomy 6. I am going to say it in Hebrew and then I'm going to say it in English and then the video will just extend so you don't have to pause and we will all say the Shema together as a fellowship. Shema Yisrael Yiva Elohenu Yiva Echad Hear O Israel Yiva is our Elohim Yiva is unity This week's message, it's my turn to, to share. And I will be talking about Galatians 5, 22 through 25. In case you haven't noticed, we in the Sabbath Service Committee are basically making monthly themes. And then we pick scriptures from the Bible and the Book of Mormon that fit with these themes. And you may have noticed that the theme for this month is the fruits of the Spirit, growing in the fruits of the Spirit. You start off with a seed. You, you grow from there. And now, what I want to talk to you about this week is reflection in that growth. One of the things that Satan tries to do is he tells us that we are doing better than we are doing. And he also likes to tell us that we're never doing good enough. He wants to feed our ego or he wants to tear us down. And the Lord... He already sees us as good because we've been perfected in the grace of Jesus Christ. He's patient. He's loving. He's kind. He is willing to wait for us to grow in his grace at our own pace. So we don't need to focus on this idea of, I've got to move forward as fast as I can. I've got to hurry up and get there. I've got to be perfect. We know through the scriptures that perfection, as outlined in Matthew 5, is nothing more than loving our enemies. Because if we love our enemies, we're going to love our neighbors. We're going to love our families. We're going to love our friends. We're going to love everyone, right? So, where are we in growth in this love? Well, we have a measuring stick here. It says the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. It's not about what we're doing. It's about the reasons why we do what we do. If we're working in a, a soup kitchen, are we doing it to help our neighbors? 
to love others? Are we doing it to bring joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness? Or are we doing it because we want to be able to tell people, hey, I, I, I volunteer in a suitcase. Because we're doing it to brag we're feeding our egoism. If we're doing it because it needs to be done and because it makes the Lord happy to see us serving one another, that's when we know we're really growing in these fruits of the Spirit. One of the things that's important to me here is this reality, this understanding. It says, against us there is no law. I've talked about this before. When we talk about this idea of the law, at least in modern the modern world, it seems to me, we want to look at this like a legal precedent. You know, we think about the Constitution, we have the right to free speech in the United States, the right to bear arms, the right to assemble. Well, those aren't really laws, those are merely rights. Laws are more like, don't jaywalk. The speed limit is 55 miles per hour. And yet, for me, living here in the U.S., there's been times when I have driven over the speed limit. And I just the other day, I was actually on the phone with Alan driving, and I was probably going about 10 miles of the speed limit because I didn't have my cruise on. And I was kind of just driving with traffic. And all of a sudden, this police officer just flies past me. I mean, he was going so fast, it was like I was sitting still. Didn't have his sirens on. And my immediate thought was, wow, if you're going to be going that fast, I hope you don't think you're going to pull me over. And, and I know we've all been in a situation like this. What was that police officer looking for? Was he looking for the letter of the law or the spirit of the law? The point of the speed limit is to make sure that we are driving safely. Of course, we're going to go over the speed limit from time to time. And there's going to be officers that pull people over for going a couple miles over the speed limit. And there are going to be those like the one that I encountered that just blew past us and it didn't matter. We were all driving safely, so it's okay. But as a police officer, he has a finite understanding and therefore will do whatever he thinks is right in any given time. And I cannot fault that because I do the same thing. Similar to, to what I'm talking about here with the Lord, he does look at the intent of our heart. Are we doing something recklessly? Are we doing something out of egoism? Are we, or are we doing something out of love? Are we doing something to bring peace? Are we doing something in kindness? When the word that translates into law is Torah, which means instruction. So, I think that rather than seeing these this list of commandments as speed limits, you can't go past 55, you can't go past 65 on the freeway, whatever it is, that particular time sometimes it's 70 here in Ohio I think that the Torah these instructions are guidelines to help us learn how to have that fruit of the spirit love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance there's nothing in the law there's nothing in the instructions we are not instructed not to seek these things and so, therefore, I would say the point of the instructions, the point of the Torah, the point of the commandments is to help us get to this point. So then, how do we, as we're, as we're growing in grace, how do we determine things are going well? Do we look and say, oh, man, you know, this person cut me off the other day. Just we'll stick with that traffic analogy. And I didn't honk my horn. I did not speak to them in sign language. I just love them and let it go. That's a good thing. That's that's the kind of attitude the Lord wants to see us have, loving our neighbors. But this also says if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. I think 
the greater way of looking at this, the greater way of checking to see, are we sitting on a plateau? Are we backsliding? Are we moving forward? Isn't to look at ourselves and say, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. I'm not doing X, Y, and Z. I think that what we need to look at is, where am I in my relationship with the Lord? Now, for those of us that enjoy the companionship of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the first comforter, the presence of God, we can't get depressed because we haven't received the second comforter yet. Line upon line, precept upon precept, that's how we grow. And wherever we are, that's where the Lord needs us to be because that's what we're ready for. And His grace makes up the difference. So we don't need to struggle with this idea that we should be better than what we are. What we should do, say, God, I appreciate the relationship that we have. I want to know you better. Show me how. In a positive way. Many people that I counsel tell me that they feel like they aren't good enough. And I have to let them know that doesn't come from the Lord. Because God, to God, you are good enough. You're strong enough. God has a infinite perspective. We have a finite perspective. God sees us as we truly are. We merely see where we've been, where we are now, and a variety of different potentials for where we could be or where we have to go, depending on our perspective. So what, what a, what's my point? What am I getting at here? What am I trying to get to with this message? Wherever you are, are you walking with the Lord? Now, I will tell you, as someone who receives, who has received the second comfort, I want to bear my testimony, something to you right now. The thing that I didn't realize, I was always like, I've got to get to this point. I've got to get there. I've got to get there. I've got to get there. But what, once you do, you suddenly realize that you've been in, this, in the presence of Jesus in your own way from the very beginning. It's kind of like the brother of Jared. You just, it just unlocks. And suddenly you can see he's been there the whole time. I, I want to share a dream with you I had. And I had this dream a very long time ago, maybe over a decade ago. I had a dream that I had been called. I, at the time, I was a member of the Salt Lake City Church. And in my dream, I was called to be an apostle of that particular church. And they set me apart. I went to all stuff and shaking my hand. And they said, do you have any questions? I'm so happy and excited to have the new person there. And I said, yeah, I, I do have one. I, said, I thought in order to be an apostle, you have to actually see Jesus. And everyone, in a very friendly way, they kind of, they kind of chuckled. And then one of the brethren went like this and pointed and I looked over and realized that at the back of the room, the one person that I didn't recognize was Jesus. He had been there the whole time. Now, I didn't have this dream and wake up thinking, I'm going to be an apostle for the Salt Lake City Church. But I woke up with this understanding that Jesus has been there the whole time. And I kind of kept that in the back of my mind. I thought about it a lot. And then when I received the second comforter, even though I obviously wasn't in Salt Lake City, I wasn't, you know, it didn't happen as a part of, of any kind of calling in the, in the Brighamite traditions. When it did happen, I still had a very similar experience because I saw truly for myself that Jesus had been there the whole time. So I want to testify to you that as you grow in the fruits of the Spirit, as you grow grace by grace, 
as you build that personal relationship with God and the first comforter, I want you to know that Jesus is there. Not physically, literally. He does come. He does observe us. He loves each of us. But you have been in the presence of the second comforter the whole time. So please don't see this growth as something that you have to do to get to a certain place. But rather, understand that it's a perspective. And the growth is realizing for yourself, not based on my testimony, not based on something that you've read, not based on the poem, Footprints in the Sand, but knowing in that special way that only those that have gone through it, that have the experience, can understand that Jesus has been there with you the whole time. You're not alone. You are loved. As you grow in your relationship with the Lord, which, by the way, is really what the Priesthood 101 class is about. So I am going to take a moment here and encourage you to please come. Even if you don't want to take the class and get a certificate, please come. Observe. Participate. Learn. Learn with us. As we grow, the only thing that truly changes is our understanding, our perspective. And as that perspective changes, the thing that we recognize to a greater capacity each time is that God loves us even more than we thought we knew. That's my message for you this Sabbath. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to Take the Sacrament of Communion. First, our statement on communion will be read, after which Christine is going to offer the sacrament prayers. Then there will be an opportunity for you to pause the video, partake of the sacrament, sing a hymn, meditate on the Atonement of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, we'll move to the conclusion of the service. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for taking the time to worship with us this week. If this video has helped you in any way, 
please be sure to like the video, share the video, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. And if you feel impressed by the Spirit to join in the Sabbath Service Committee, we do need people here to help us move this work forward. We are looking for a, I don't know if videographer is the right person, but someone who has and, and knows how to use the equipment to edit videos so that we can turn over the footage and then that person can put all this together, compile it for us. I am now going to lead us in a closing prayer. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time to thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for the technology that you've given us. Thank you for each other, for this fellowship. Thank you for all those that are part of the Sabbath Service Committee, the Temple Committee, and every other committee that we are moving this work forward in your name. We ask that you please bless those that are helping make these classes and services and everything else possible. Please give them the strength that they need to move forward. Bless them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to do the things that you need us to do. And Please bless those that have yet to come. Help them to find us. Help them to find their call. And please bless that they will know of a surety the truth of your message, the light of your love, and that this is where they need to be. Bless them, keep them safe from the adversary. In particular, ask that you put a special blessing on the sisters that participate in the fellowship. Satan has worn down a number of the sisters I've talked to with doubt in themselves, in the atonement, in the priesthood, in the kingdom. Some of these sisters have been beaten down by the places they came from, while others have just been worn down emotionally by other things in their lives. Please bless them. Strengthen them. Help us be there for them. And we know that there are brothers and non-binary that are going through and have gone through the same thing. Please help us as a fellowship to strengthen one another. To create a safe place so we can win this battle against loneliness that the adversary has brought out into the world. We ask you to please bless those that are seeking employment, those that have found employment, that those that are seeking will find and they will find that which they are looking for and that which is pleasing unto thee. Those that have found employment, please help them to do the things that they need to do to impress their employers and to ensure that they are able to move forward in their careers without being stepped on or taken advantage of. Please soften the hearts of those that they work with that they will be kinder and please bless those that have found these jobs Help them in their patience. Please bless the sick and the afflicted. Help them to heal. And thank you for healing those that have been sick and afflicted.
Please bless us as we move forward. We will continue doing so in your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. So mote it be. Amen.